be plenty of runs in on this weekend. Well, we certainly hope so. Uh, unchanged side as well. Yes, I think they are uh, working on the same formula that uh, you don't change the winning team. And I think it's rather sad that uh, Pakistan has not been able to give uh, much opportunity to men like Shoaib Mohammed and Shaquille Ahmed. So runs off the first ball of the innings from Chris Pringle as we now join our One World of Sport commentators Grant Nisbet and Bob Cunis. Thanks, Jeff. Good morning, everyone. So the first run taken by Said Anwar with Chris Pringle. Off the back foot. What a lovely shot. He just strokes that uh, Sahail and finds the gap out there and it goes away for four. And Sahail gets hold of that first ball. Larson nearly six from the first ball that he's bowled. Well, Armour Sahail said, thank you very much and thumps his fifth boundary. Yes, uh, of the two, Sahel is the one who is timing the ball on this wicket. Uh, he has played some good shots on the offside, and that one more shot and on the leg stump, and Sahel right across with the middle of the bat, uh, pulls it around the corner. So Larson has just had a change in the field, which I'll explain after this ball. Oh, Sahel having a real Suicide and Tony Blaine has not had a great morning, will be much relieved by that. Just a couple of uh, overs ago, Sohel did the same thing, but he at that time he didn't get a touch. But on this occasion, he got the outside edge. That's not confirmed. Full toss, smashed through extra cover. Lovely shot from side Amla. You can't do much about it, Ken. Stano, this is an adjustment in the field, putting a man out to square leg. He got a nick on that, and he's on his way. Larson has a second wicket, Blaine a second catch, and the Pakistan are 59 for two. Well, once again, this man Larson has come to the fore. Just a little bit of a way swing, of moving the ball across the left-hander. Kiss of death, isn't it? When you say that he's patient, <laughs> and all of a sudden he comes down the wicket to Gavin Larson to try and hit him back over his head. Got under it, straight up in the air. Fairly straightforward catch at the end of the day. But really, is trying to uh, really uh, get that away on the onside. Hit it over wide mid on mid wicket, and really has gone ready to cover. But to bring Hart into the attack, and he's responded very well. Oh. well there he's getting one fine. It's very fine too, and it's going to go down to that short boundary at Eden Park. And the South Stand's not that far away. It's the end of the over. It's 80 for three after 27 overs. In Malik. It's deep mid-wicket. That's Cairns. They've also got a, a long on and a deep backward square on the onside. Oh, he's bowled him. Thompson started again the way he did last week. He had three wickets last week and he's got a wicket in his first over this week. Great success for Shane Thompson. Well, you should never get bowled sweeping. If you miss it, it should hit you on the pan. It'll be very interesting to see the replay as to how this ball got by him. Pitching round about just middle and off and carried straight on. He got his front foot too far across. Over goes leg stump and Salim Malik is on his way. And Pakistan now struggling at 80 for four. Now, Asif Mushtabar is a left-handed player. Obviously hurt, is he? And just a little edge, and that again is the edge to which Shane Thompson will be spinning the ball. And it's going to bring Asif Mushtabari's first runs, and they're a boundary. And what this edge does show, apart from the fact that New Zealand don't have a slip in, which is understandable, but what it does show is that the edge off the slow bowler will go for four. An indication that the pitch isn't all that slow. He can't get away with straying at all, and so it's, he'll be heartened by the performance. It's in the air, it's going to bring him a wicket too. Asif Mustafa has gone, and Rutherford grabs the catch. Matthew Hart has a wicket, it's the fifth for Pakistan, and he is absolutely firmly. Yes, perhaps he just held it back a little, or it didn't arrive certainly as quickly as 
Mustafa had anticipated and Rutherford took a relatively easy catch just lunging to his right. So Mustafa and has certainly shown in Dunedin that he's got real skills as a batsman. And interesting that he's come in and not Wazi Makram, who came in in a similar position in the match last week then. Yes, I'm under the impression that Latif has the skills to be able to push. And down the pitch he goes, and he's hit that with some intent as Rashid, as uh, Basad Ali. And Ken sweeping around there, can't prevent two, 88 to five. Yes, he tried to hit him over extra cover, which he did, but not with a great deal of power, and the offside sweeper was able to come round and prevent it going for four. But Seem give himself room. He went down the pitch, just got outside leg stump to get the ball on the offside of him, and hits it over extra cover, but spooned it rather than smacking it there. He's hit that one well, and it might beat the short field, short boundary out there. Oh, no, he does very well. It's only one run, and hard getting good support from Gavin Larson on the square leg boundary. Yes, it's not often you see the bowler applaud, but he did on that occasion. You see them put the hands on their hips, give it the teapot when the... ...out bowling this morning, or early this afternoon, is that... Uh... That's right, and he got a hand on it, and couldn't hang on. Shane Thompson. Well, once again, we're going to see here it's a tremendous effort by Thompson there that was uh, well hit. He wishes he was just three or four inches taller and he'd have had that. But, uh, New Zealand have filled it very well this morning and uh, some of those half chances. The last of the two recognised players, even though Acton can bat. Thompson gets another one and away goes Russia Latif. This is the pressure. I'd like to think that the New Zealand bowlers have created this pressure. In this uh, innings, 15 overs or so remaining. Barsad Ali swings this time through mid-wicket or square leg. And Gavin Larson out there once again does some good fielding. And two runs. Balls at least remaining from Hart. He goes again and just wide of the field. And that's all the way for four. As we're seeing here, just a little guilty of being a little wide there, giving Master Dali room. Mind you, it wasn't that far away from Kenny Rutherford. The dominant factor of his game. Down he goes, he hits this one all right. So he's put pay to uh, those comments with a very good four over extra cover. Well, Glenn Turner pointed out before quite rightfully that he is a hitter, he's not a worker, and they struggled to work the ball around for ones. This is obviously his best, best method of attack, and that's down the wicket and give it everything, and that's a fine shot. Good footwork to the ball and hitting it inside out. This is his seventh over. Down the wicket goes past it. Oh, it's in the air, should be safe. He didn't get hold of it that well, and Andrew Jones down on the deep picks up. Coming back for third, are they? Yes, they make it. So Basad Ali on this occasion, coming down the wicket and Pringle bowling the off spinner again. So Basad Ali's actually in the end played it quite well. He's dragged it around, he's hit it wider than he thought he was going to originally hit it. He's found the gap and it was a good three. Wazzy Macram now on strike. Oh! And all this could be tight. He must be run out by a long way, surely. What's going on? Well, he's called for the, uh, the third umpire's decision, but Bassett Ali knows, and I think we know too, John Morrison, that he's a mile out when this ball hits the stumps. Why he's gone for the third umpire, I don't know. Was it really that close? Was it the ball? Uh, did the ball hit the stumps? Let's have another look. Well, there's certainly no doubt that he's nowhere near his ground. Where's the ball? Did the ball hit the stumps? I don't know. There's the ball on the ground next to it. I'd have to have another look at that. Maybe he's decided he's not sure whether Tony Blaine has actually taken this with, with dislodged the bales with the ball in his hands. It's an interesting one. What will the verdict be? Well, Buster Alley's just about left the ground. We're waiting for the verdict. The third umpire 
He's uh, wrecked with indecision up there, obviously. I don't know that he's going to get any more pictures from us. If he doesn't do it shortly, they're going to have to call him back because he's, all, he's only got 10 yards to go and he's in the dressing room. <laughs> so here's the ball. We'll just see whether the Blaine has to... Did the, the ball dislodge the, the bales? Is it a direct hit? Maybe not. In other words, maybe Tony Blaine has dislodged the bales without the ball being in his hands, and that is the issue, I think. Well, he's gone. There you are. Bastardelli decided. I wonder what would have happened if he'd stayed out there. Bastardelli almost uh, helped the decision. In the end, the red light shows him out. He's gone. 127 for six. Seven, sorry. That's what fooled me initially. He was so far short it wasn't even close as well. This, uh, he may pick up four here. This is quite surprising. It's just run away, guided around on the leg side. Didn't seem to be doing much, but it sneaked through for four. End of the over, 133 for seven. This has been reasonable. Oh, he's bowled him. Gavin Lass has got his fourth wicket. Wazi Makram's gone, and the eighth wicket is down. Delight for the crowd here at Eden Park and for Gavin Larson. This will not be a shot that uh, Akram would want on one of his uh, home videos when he retires and he wants to reminisce. He just slogs right across this one. I think uh, off stump's probably gone out of the ground. There's no question about that. And so he's nine for eight. Larson has four for 20. It's in the air and it's caught. It's brilliantly caught. Harlan grabs another catch. Pringle has his first wicket and the ninth wicket is down for Pakistan. Wacker Yunus goes, what a good catch. Yes, well, Hartland's coming in tight to try and save the single and he ends up getting a, a very smart catch here, having to make good progress into the ball and just getting his hands under it. Good rolling catch there, well done by him. And so now Pakistan, ninth wicket goes, that of Wacker Yunus at 146. Straight, that's a good hit and four runs. So Atta Rahman goes to his best score in one day cricket. If this wasn't good bowling by De Groen, being up there to a tail ender, if he is going to hit, he's going to swing through it. And because we didn't have a deep mid off, we're seeing here that De Groen just over tossing. Men up inside the circle, it was a matter of getting bat on board, it was probably going to be four cut that shot out even though you've got a tail ender and you've got to put pressure on him you don't want the pakistani batsman scoring fours at this point in the game especially in the last tour in. and he swings it away it's four more a full toss and that's two consecutive boundaries for rahman and pakistan at the end of the 49th over a 156 for nine one over remaining now it'll be bowled by chris cairns for new zealand Akram Razar is still there, 59 for 9, then the last ball of the innings. And he hammers it away, and a good piece of fielding. They'll look for a second run, and there's a chance of a run out, but they do complete the two runs, and Pakistan end their 50 overs at 161, an improvement of 15 on their performance last week. So New Zealand will need to score 162 to win their first game in the series. As as they leave the field, New Zealand would have to be happy with their bowling efforts there. The way they contained and gradually winkled out the Pakistani batsmen in this innings. Salim Malik winning the toss and batting at the halfway point. Pakistan was 74 for three. And when Malik went at 80, Pakistan was up against it. Mushtabar and Latif went quickly. At 40 overs, it was 122 for six at which point Basad Ali was run out for the top score of 34. And the innings never really getting underway. The tail end is left with a lot to do. A similar score to last week when Pakistan made 146 a winning score. And the New Zealand bowlers did the job once again. Gavin Larson took the top off the innings and showed his value yet again. Four for 24 off 10, a magnificent effort. Matthew Hart bowled a very good 10-over spell, his first in one-day internationals. Thompson a good spell as well. And a warning for New Zealand's batsmen that they may feign Raza, Sahail and Sully Malik.
Andrew Jones is the new batsman coming out to replace Blair Hartland, who was bowled by Wacker Yunus for three. Jones off the mark. Characteristically down to third man. Well, the consensus was that there was far too much grass on the pitch. The ball seemed a bit. So New Zealand needing three and a half and over for the remaining 44 overs. Through Brian Young, so on one over, Wacker Yunus, the great Pakistani fast bowler, has captured both openers, and that is continued disaster for New Zealand. With Young leaving and Ian Smith, that was an outstanding ball. Well, I've talked about the Wacker Yunus Yorker before, and you won't see a better one than this. That's done Brian Young for length and pace, and look where he's ended up. A little bit embarrassing, but fantastic delivery from Yunus. Right on target, Young is gone. Big ovation from the crowd here. Popular man came out of it. To see that Yorker, Yorker again, how do you define Yorker? John Morrison, that's how you define it. Full and straight and quick and absolutely on the target. Yeah, what a superb delivery. It really is a beauty, isn't it? One, three, three. Good looking drive. This is in front of the wicket. It should go away for four. Well, this is the shot that will bring a lot of confidence to the New Zealand camp. Beautiful off throw from Ked Rutherford. Eunice has been on top to this point. And he puts it on the side and Rutherford onto the front foot and just times it beautifully through mid-off. And Marlick gave up the chase very early. Yes, that was well played. It uh, wasn't quite up to him, but he timed it very well. Played it on the up, as you say, in super shot. Pretty much a level pegging. Oh, is that a catch? Yes, it is. Good catch. Andrew Jones gone. Looking to work the ball on the leg side. Doesn't keep it down. And he's gone. Well, this is an excellent catch and some good bowling too. He's kept Andrew Jones pinned down. He's tried to get him through the onside. He just makes the mistake of lifting it a little. And that's an excellent catch by Barsadali. Throws the ball aloft and Jones is gone. New Zealand 65 for three. And yeah, this DVD draft player profile. Real fire to have come back. See what he can pick up in the meantime. Pulls it away. That's a good shot. It's been a long time between boundaries, but Rutherford hits one here. And New Zealand go up to 80 for two. As we're seeing here, the man guilty once again of Bowling short of a length, looking for that little bit of bounce on a slow wicket, just sits there. And if you see that there, it just set up nicely for the batsman to get away to the boundary. He's got to be a little fuller. Good. Bob. Yes, Kenny realised that he had to up the tempo. The ball was up there. Came down the wicket, didn't quite get to the pitch of the ball and didn't get enough bat on it. And it turned out to be rather... Well, it was, well he made hard work. Sport of sport. And get some credit out of this. Oh, that must be a lot. So that's bonus territory for New Zealand. Well, they'll take these ones, I'm sure. It's quick, and it's gone very quickly with the arm as well. A little bit of movement in the air, the in-swinger. Well, it's been a long summer, but they're thoroughly enjoying this one. I think he did. Yes, he did. No need to appeal for that because Shane Thompson is walking off. It was a good ball. Tried to climb into it, got the edge and threw to the keeper. Well, this is when he did get right. Waka Yunus, very quick and Thompson. Not really a lot of foot movement going for the big drive through the offside. And just the edge and Latif takes that one. Thompson is gone, so hope yet for Pakistan. New Zealand still something to do. 142 for five. Oh, it's in the air, is it? me, Akram Raza has put it down, a funny sort of a shot from Chris, no, Tony Blaine made a complete mess of it. Well, Tony Blaine had given this away, he thought he was gone for all money here, the ball lobs into the offside, and he looks as if he's got it, and as soon as he hits the ground, the ball spills out. So will that be the lifeline New Zealand needs? 
that must be a wide. Yes, it is. So, Steve Dunn says that's too wide, angling down the leg side. Plains tried to hit this through the onside, and it's got, uh, he's got a squared round on it a wee bit and spooned it into the offside. And boy, that should have been taken. Catches like that when you matches. Shin at Eden Park. It was a loud appeal. Now, is that out? Yes, it is. Steve Dunn says that's out. There seemed to be some debate as to whether the ball carried through to the keeper. There was a nod from the square leg umpire, so Tony Blaine is on his way. Well, Tony Blaine was unsure whether this had carried through. Definitely the edge. You can see the outside edge there, and it's carried through very low. It's very hard for even us to tell whether it got through to him, but judging by his reaction, he was sure it had. Tony Blaine's gone for naught. He's on now 144 for six. Sonny Malik has to find another bowler because he has... Line. A lot of movement in, started in line. There was no doubt in umpire Cowie's mind that Gavin Larson was out of LBW. Well, this is the angle we talked about, Grant. It was a beautiful shot there from uh, Hart. The ball was over tossed, just outside off stump. Bowled wide right of the crease. Wasn't quite to the pitch of it, but the end result was very effective. Big gaps out there in that field of those sweepers. Well, I think they've still got to keep going for it in this over. Now, Yunus is four for 28. And he's got those four wickets with two in and over both times. Clean through, Bergy. And away goes Matthew Hart. And it'll be up to Richard De Gruen and to Chris Pringle. Well, it's just here we go in here. This is the uh, score was just beating with pace there. A little bit of a way swing, but uh, beating with pace. Straight through the defences of Matthew Hart. Let's have a look at uh, the reaction of Jeff Howard. Can't believe it. So Hart disappears. De Gruen has got out there very quickly. And New Zealand still need three. De Gruen gets back on board. They go for it. Over throws. Well, it's all happening out there, Grant, isn't it? The scores are tied. And there's still four balls to go. Here we go. Waka Yunus. LBWP, chance of a run out. Nothing. No LBW, no run out. <laughs> Look at those Pakistani fielders now. Everyone up in the ring. See that often in a one day game. Another LBW, yes, he's out. He's got the LBW, the game is tied. 
Well, what can we say, Grant? <laughs> Unbelievable finish here at Eden Park. The New Zealanders walk off, heads down. The Pakistanis know they've got out of jail. The match is tied. Well, and uh, that man here has six wickets. Tremendous bowling performance here. We're seeing it here. Well, it pitched in line and didn't do much at all. The ground didn't get far enough forward, but what a finish to a game that meandered along for three quarters of the game and the last hour and a half, it's really picked up. Nobody won, nobody lost. It's a tie at Eaton Park. And Pringle and De Gruen set up the tied finish with just a couple of balls to spare. Well, Waka Yunus just bowled beautifully. Look at that, 6 for 30 off 9.4 overs as he and Wazim bowled Pakistan back into the match. It was just brilliant. And the slower bowlers went for a few more today with Akram and also Salim Malik getting one apiece. Well, Waka, well, I'll present you with the Man of the Match Award. Congratulations with that. Thank you and perhaps much. just as importantly, a check here for $500. Yeah. Well, your team funds are certainly benefiting by all this money. A lot of rupees in that too, I guess. That's right, if you translate that into, into Pakistani money, it's a bit of money. A very tight game out there, a lot of tension? Yeah, it was a bit of, a bit of pressure now, but uh, when, when there was 40 runs required and uh, 10 overs left, and we were, we, oh, I was hoping that we're gonna, we can do it and we, we're going to do it.